please be seated. Paul wrote to Timothy, I urge that prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come today in celebration and appreciation for our President Paul C. Pribinow and for Abigail, Thomas, and Maya. We ask this day that you look with favor upon them, grant them good health, and renew them each day in your grace. Give them the strength to work in a spirit of wisdom and kindness and to serve your children at Augsburg according to your intentions. Instill in them and in all of us the patience, courage, and vision to be people of reconciliation, love, hope, justice, fairness, and decency. May we all know that which is worth knowing, love that which is worth loving, and praise that which pleases you most. In your name we pray, amen. Mrs. Pribinow and the Pribinow family, distinguished guests, presidents, and delegates from our fellow institutions of higher learning, members of the clergy of many faiths, members of the Board of Regents, faculty, staff, and students, alumni, neighbors, and friends, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Barbara Edwards Farley. I am the Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the College. It is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of our entire Augsburg community to the inauguration of Paul C. Pribinow as the 11th president of Augsburg College. In its 137 year history, Augsburg College has had only 10 previous presidents. August Venos, Georg Sverdrup, Sven Ofdedal, George Sverdrup, Henrik Hendrickson, Bernard Christensen, Leif Harbo, Oscar Anderson, Charles Anderson, and William Frame. We are especially pleased to honor the college's ninth president, Charles Anderson, and his wife, Kate, who unfortunately could not be with us today. And our 10th president, William Frame, and his wife, Anne. Some of the names of these presidents grace the buildings on our campus. More importantly, the spirits of all of them live on in the noble work of teaching and learning that happens, not just in the buildings on this campus, but in Augsburg's myriad campuses and programs around the state and around the world, wherever the knowledge and caring of our faculty and staff transform the lives of our students and the greater community. Today, we inaugurate our 11th president. We invest him with his authority. The word inaugurate comes from a Latin word, augur, meaning bird. This is also where we get the name of our school mascot, the Augies. In ancient times, a flight of birds was seen as a sign of increase, success, and abundance. So when we celebrate an inauguration, it is a way of beginning a new era of all those things, increase, success, and abundance. The words invest and investiture come from another Latin word, investire, which literally means to enrobe or to surround. So today, on, as on other important occasions in the life of the college, we come enrobed, faculty and staff, regents and alumni, clergy and invited dignitaries. As you'll see in today's ceremony, Paul Pribinow, also enrobed, 
will be surrounded by regents and clergy, faculty and staff, as he is invested with the authority to lead the college. We surround him in this way to offer him our spiritual support, but also to remind him that his authority to lead ultimately comes from us, the community that he leads, the community that creates and cherishes and cares for Augsburg College. While this ceremony today is full of history and ritual, it is also filled with the promise of the future. While we honor the past, we also look forward to new beginnings. This day, this presidency, this era, mark a new beginning for the college and for us all. The theme of Dr. Privenow's inauguration is Ages of Imagination. As I welcome you again to this ceremony and thank you for coming, let me ask Professor Doug Green of the Department of English to read a brief passage from the poem that inspired this theme. Dr. Green. Thank you, Dean Farley. The inaugural theme, Ages of Imagination, grows out of the poem, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, an influential work by the British romantic poet, artist, and social rebel, William Blake, whose 250th birthday is next year. As we celebrate Dr. Pribenow's inauguration, we also celebrate our calling as a college and imagine ourselves in future ages, hence the acronym AGES, A-G-E-S, that recalls the four themes of this new era at Augsburg, abundance, generosity, engagement, and service. Of course, my colleagues and I in the English department know that poor Mr. Blake would have bristled at his poetry serving as institutional epigraph. It just wasn't his style. But I'd suggest that there's a fruitful tension in the collision of Blake and Pribenow, entirely in keeping with the spirit of the college's liberal, liberal arts tradition. So here is an excerpt from a memorable fancy on the 12th plate of Blake's illuminated text, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. The prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel dined with me, and I asked them how they dared so roundly to assert that God spoke to them, and whether they did not think at the time that they would be misunderstood and so be the cause of imposition. Isaiah answered, I saw no God nor heard any in a finite, organical perception. But my senses discovered the infinite in everything. And as I was then persuaded, and remain confirmed, that the voice of honest indignation is the voice of God, I cared not for the consequences, but wrote. Then I asked, does a firm persuasion that a thing is so make it so? He replied, all poets say that it does, and in ages of imagination, this firm persuasion removed mountains, but many are not capable of a firm persuasion of anything.
A leader without followers is nothing. Yet there is no greater disservice in a democracy than to follow blindly. This college requires the informed and engaged following of all who care for it, of all who touch and are touched by it. To the members of the church, your experience of faith and prayer inspire us. You guide us and center us through times of hardship and times of success. Will you follow through lives of action as well as contemplation, indeed as well as in prayer, to help this college and this community be all that God meant them to be? To our colleagues from other institutions of higher education, your quest for excellence in scholarship and teaching inspires us. It spurs us on and makes us strive to be better than we are. Will you follow through your fight for ignorance and your desire to spread knowledge to help this president and this college be all that God meant them to be? To our neighbors, your dreams, hopes, and aspirations inspire us. Your co our college was born of similar stuff. You are part of us. We are part of you. Will you follow by offering and receiving hospitality, by sharing in God's grace to help this president and this college be all that God meant them to be? To our alumni and regents, your legacy and examples of lives well lived inspire us. You affirm the work of our teachers and provide our students with a star to wish upon. Will you follow through your friendship and fellowship your generosity and judgment to help this president and this college be all that God meant them to be? To our staff, your vision and commitment and model of service inspire us. Through many years and even many presidents, you offer stability of place. You teach our servants, our students, what it means to serve. You make Augsburg more than the sum of its parts. Will you follow through your leadership to help this president and this college be all that God meant them to be? To our faculty. Your deep calling to ignite our imaginations inspires us. You are the heart of this campus. Your critique in the face of opportunity and your wisdom in the face of challenge are both needed in full measure. Will you follow through your encouraging spirit and your unbridled pursuit of truth to help this president and this college be all that God meant them to be? To my fellow students, just as our professors inspire us with their passion for teaching, we must inspire them with our curiosity for all that life has to offer. As Ogbrick appropriately stretches to be many things to many people, we must never let the college forget that the education of students, in all its forms, is its central focus. Will you follow with me through questioning and creativity and love of learning to help this president and this college be all that God meant them to be?
President Pribnow, with God's wisdom and love as our guiding strength, we are with you.
Shout joy to the Lord, all earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Enter God's presence with joy. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong, our shepherd and we the flock. Enter the temple gates, the courtyard with thanks and praise. Give thanks and bless God's name. Indeed, the Lord is good. God's love is forever, faithful from age to age. It is my great pleasure to introduce Ted Grindall, Chair of the Augsburg College Board of Regents, who will present Dr. Pribonow. He will be followed by the Reverend Mark Hansen, presiding Bishop of the Evangelical Church in America, who together with Mr. Grindall will perform the rites of investiture. Thank you, Dean Farley, and good afternoon. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you on this day filled with promise for the future of Augsburg College. Please allow me just a few moments to tell you how we got here. The search for Augsburg's 11th president involved a committee made up of regents, faculty and staff, alumni and students. The search process took over 18 months. It involved reviewing the applications of a large pool of excellent candidates, narrowing the field to those who we invited to campus and then engaging in dialogue and deliberation with the entire Augsburg community. Indeed, in a season of presidential searches, especially among Lutheran colleges, Augsburg should pride itself on a search that was open and transparent and an authentic reflection of the very nature of Augsburg College. As much as anyone, you all deserve congratulations for the choice of Paul Pribonow. At the end of the search process, Paul stood out over all the rest, and he was the unanimous choice of the search committee. It was clear that Paul felt called as part of his Christian vocation 
to the important task of leading augsburg college paul's gifts represent the best combination of experience in higher education a proven track record in development and a life of faith in line with the traditions of the college paul is committed to augsburg's mission and vision this morning's festival service was a fine example of Paul's affirmation of the centrality of chapel to the daily life of this college. Since his arrival on campus, his energy and enthusiasm and engagement with faculty, students, and staff has been so evident to all of us. His presidency holds many more promises for us all, but I will leave those for him to share with you later. Let me conclude by saying that Augsburg has also been blessed by Paul's family. Abigail, Thomas, and Maya. Not since Bernard Christensen's presidency, which began in 1938, has the college first family included small children. We warmly welcome the entire Pribinow family into our midst. Paul, speaking on behalf of the Board of Regents, we are thrilled to have you as our 11th president, and we expect great things from you. I invite you now to follow Bishop Hansom to the lower dais, where you will be invested with the authority of your office and would now members of the clergy and other representatives of Augsburg's diverse faith community please take your places around the foot of the platform. Paul Pribinow, as a child of God, you are called and empowered to a life of discipleship in Christ. That call brings you now to Augsburg College. The spirit that has guided this college for 137 years works also in you, imbuing you with the necessary wisdom and grace to accept this call. You bring new eyes and a new heart to extend the vision of the college. You know the duties that belong to the president of the college as defined in articles and bylaws. God has given you special gifts for meeting the challenges of this office. Do you accept these duties and gifts as means for guiding the college in its mission to nurture future leaders in service to the world? Do you accept the call to lead Augsburg College? With God's wisdom and love, as my guide and strength, I do. On behalf of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the office of president of Augsburg College is now committed to you. God bless you and make you a blessing to others. Receive now the medallion as a symbol of your office. Serve well with diligence, wisdom, courage, and love to the glory of God and the well-being of this college. Members of the Greater Augsburg College community, we give you Paul C. Pribinow, 11th President of the College. Thank you very, very much. What a wonderful afternoon for all of us. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to have all of the students, all of the Augsburg College students who are in this room, stand up, please. <laughs> These are the reason I'm here. Thank you. 
thank you for being here today for this celebration of Augsburg College. I am inspired by your faithful lives, and I accept the call to be your partner in service to Augsburg with gratitude, resolve, and humility. Abigail, Thomas, Maya, and I are quickly learning to love our new home, for that is how we see Augsburg, and you are all teaching us how. As I offer my inaugural remarks this afternoon, there are two distinct voices I hear most clearly. The first is a voice of a student, whose name I'm sorry I do not remember, who was part of a listening session with me last spring during one of my transition visits to campus. Even as she recited the many reasons she was glad to be an Augsburg student, a fine and dedicated faculty, a vital urban setting and life, a rich and challenging education, she also offered this keen observation about the college. For all of the good and important work that goes on here, Augsburg needs to have a more joyful countenance. We need to know and learn how to rejoice and be glad. Now say what you may about Norwegian, American, and Lutheran modesty. Surely she was correct that we have every reason to give thanks for all that is Augsburg College. In fact, I originally proposed that we refer to the inauguration as joy to the world, but I was outvoted by those who thought that a Christmas carol and three dog night anthem might not carry the appropriate weight for the occasion. The other voice I hear is from my new colleague, Professor Bob Cogill of our English department, who urged me in early planning meetings for this inauguration to keep it simple. These two encounters have taught me something about Augsburg College. First, that its students and faculty have no problem speaking their mind to the president. <laughs> this is the heritage of the Lutheran Free Church at its best and the wonderful, messy practice of democracy at its most powerful. This is a good thing. For this inauguration, this portent of the future is not about me, but it's about us all of us at this college and in this neighborhood and beyond. So I hope to honor these two members of our community who have already taught me so much with remarks that are both joyful and simple. This is what we need and what we deserve for this wonderful moment in Augsburg's history. Let me begin with something simple and ultimately joyful. Authentic life, especially a life of faith, begins and ends in gratitude and in thanksgiving. We come together with the humility of thanksgiving, the recognition that life is a gift and a privilege not to be misused or misled, and I might add, not to be missed. The late Henry Nouwen once wrote that gratitude goes beyond the mine and the thine and claims the truth that all of life is a pure gift. All of life is a pure gift. Let these words of mine then become my thanksgiving to God and to all of you, my psalm of gratitude for this college, for its mission and values, and for the cloud of witnesses gathered here today and scattered across time and space that hold Augsburg College in their hearts and minds. The theme of this inauguration is not joy to the world. Okay, right sentiment, wrong choice, I get it. The theme is ages of imagination. The passage you heard Professor Green read is an interesting choice because it is so full of promise that the power of belief, that firm persuasion, as Blake calls it, is enough even to move mountains. <coughs> we have many mountains to move here at Augsburg. Some of them seem like the rocky mountains, steep and tall and treacherous. Others seem like molehills, but even those can stop us in our tracks if we don't have the key ingredient Blake calls for in his poem. It's not material resources, money, or human resources, smart and talented people. We've got plenty of those. It is imagination. In ages of imagination, Blake tells us, the power of imagination, the power of belief, the power of a firm persuasion can move mountains. We must decide today to live in one of those ages of imagination. In fact, to use our imaginations to create a new era for the college. I am thankful for all of you here today who already have that firm persuasion. But that last bit in the Blake quotation also tells us that some people are not capable 
of a perm firm persuasion of anything, does that mean that there are some people who don't believe, who resist the notion that we can move mountains, who resist the possibility that Augsburg can be more than it is? Yes. And I am thankful for the opportunity to work with all of you who do believe to prove otherwise. There is work to be done here. Join us, please. There are four themes to my presidency. If you've been coming to chapel this week or to other events, you've heard me talk about them, but they bear repeating here. These four themes are abundance, generosity, engagement, and service. Think of them as the ages, as in ages of imagination, okay, a bit hokey, abundance, generosity, engagement, and service, but you won't forget, I don't think you won't forget. Augsburg is already blessed to have all of these things, though we sometimes don't recognize these great gifts, gifts that God has given us and gifts that we were meant to care for and pass on. Abundance, which is not just what we have, but also who we are. Generosity, which is not just what we give, but also where we are and what we do. Engagement, which is not just what we offer to others, but also what we receive from them. You will hear these ideas again in the course of my presidency, over and again. And I'm thankful for the chance to help you and to have you help me put these ideas into action. Since I've talked about the first three in chapel and other places this, this week, let me focus on the last one, service, and particularly service to the city, something we do brilliantly here at Augsburg and something that brings us national and international recognition again and again. Over the past few weeks, many of our good faculty and staff members have invited me to visit with them some of the organizations in our urban neighborhood. I love to learn how their personal commitments have shaped their work in service to the city. I love to imagine in these visits the future of Augsburg College living with our diverse neighbors in this, our neighborhood. One particular afternoon, I visited the Daru Uba Mosque, one of four mosques in our neighborhood. The imam from that mosque, Sheikh Noor, welcomed us with open arms. We sat together in the mosque worship space in our stocking feet in a circle and spoke with each other about our faith and lives. I spoke for some time with the elders about peace and the God of Abraham, about our lives here together in Cedar Riverside, about our children and the aspirations we have that their lives will be meaningful and successful, about the world and how frightening it is and it can be to live with strangers, about democracy and civil discourse. In other words, we spoke as fellow humans living together in the city. I love the city, which probably still baffles my family with whom I grew up in primarily rural settings. It will come as no surprise that my first thoughts go to the role that neighborhoods play in a strong urban life. Though we are a city, we live our lives in neighborhoods. It is in the neighborhood where I come face to face with the challenges and joys of negotiating my lives, my life with others. I think this is why I learned so much from the poet and essayist Wendell Berry, who says of the interplay between people and their neighborhoods, our culture must be our response to our place. Our culture and our place are images of each other and inseparable from each other. So neither can be better than the other. Here in our neighborhood, we build a culture together. We negotiate our lives together. We sustain a rich and sometimes messy democracy. We renew civilized life again and again in our common work and teaching and civic dialogue. And we celebrate the ordinary, everyday character of life together. What a joy it is to me and to this college to be neighbors with our fellow citizens in this place. During my short time here at Augsburg, I have been challenged to think again about the role of colleges and universities in an urban setting. I am committed to the mutual dependency of colleges and the city. The paradigm for the relationship between cities and higher education must be less about extracting benefits from each other, less dependent on incidental impact, and more focused on the various resources that can be shared in the pursuit of a more robust, healthy, faithful, and meaningful urban life. I am thankful, deeply grateful, for the opportunity to lead Augsburg 
to give substance to this renewed paradigm of urban and neighborhood citizenship, of democracy and education, of living our lives together in God's good creation. There is much more that could be said in an inaugural address, much more that should be said about teaching and learning, about diversity, about faith. The truth is, we need a science building. We need a science building, but we also need a fine arts building. But more than new buildings, we also need a renewed commitment to the mission of the college. This means that we need an endowment that will enable us to continue our tradition of teaching Christian values through the lens of the liberal arts and the liberal arts through the lens of Christian values. Our faculty and staff so dedicated to Augsburg's mission work hard and deserve to be paid more than they are. Our students, who more than ever need to be exposed to the world to learn about its complexity and to take in its rich diversity, need support so that every one of them might have the opportunity to study abroad. The marvelous access that we provide to many students needs to be enhanced by more excellence. There are many excellent programs at Augsburg, but we should not and cannot rest on these alone. Can we have too much excellence? Would students who came to Augsburg because we offer access leave or be turned off by more excellence? I imagine not. These are huge mountains that need to be moved. I don't claim to have all the answers about how to move them, but I see these mountains clearly on the horizon, and they will not escape my gaze, nor will they resist my resolve. I will need your help, the help of everyone in this room and of many people beyond this room, but we will move them. In ages of imagination, a firm persuasion can move mountains. I believe that we live in such an age. I am thankful for the opportunity to persuade all of you of the same. You have my promise that I will work tirelessly on your behalf and on behalf of this college. All of life is a pure gift. Augsburg is a gift. It has become a gift to me and to my family. I intend to take good care of that gift, to cherish it, to love it, and to fight for its cause. I give thanks to God and to all of you for entrusting me with the gift that is Augsburg College. I know that you share with me this deep sense of thanksgiving for this college and its remarkable commitments. What we do here matters to our students, our neighborhood, our city, our, the church, and the world. What we do here is significant because our work is grounded in a deep and confident faith, because it enjoys a history of love in a community of memory and tradition, because it believes deeply in intellectual curiosity and personal courage, and because it is full, it is full of hope. What we need now is imagination and faith and fearlessness to hear and follow the call to be a college committed to the liberal arts in all that we learn and teach, a college grounded in faith and values that are the source, that are the source of our firm persuasion, a college located in a place full of life and urgency that draws us out of our insular selves, a college engaged with God's creation, rich in difference, that constantly surprises us. What fun we're going to have. What fun we're going to have. Thank you for this invitation to come along with you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks be to God and to all of you. We're not going to stand and we're going to sing a hymn that has been written especially for this occasion. Now, I have to tell you, this is such a wonderful privilege. Gracia Grindall, Augsburg class of 1965, I believe, was my teacher at Luther College when I was an undergraduate. She's now, of course, at the seminary. And Gracia has written the beautiful words of this new hymn. And David Sherwin, who is a graduate of Augsburg class of 1979, has written the music. 
And this morning at our festival worship, we sang it for the first time, and now we'd like to sing it again. It's a beautiful hymn, and if you look at the first letters of each of the stanzas, um, this is how we'll remember ages. Um, uh, thank you, Gracia, for that. Um, the only thing that I would ask you to think about is that each of the uh, verses ends with a different version of Alleluia. Um, one is in Spanish, one is in Swahili, um, one is in... Um, Norwegian, I would think. <laughs> We're trying to cover all of our bases, but if for some reason that's, you find that difficult, just sing Alleluia, because it all comes out the same. So let's stand and join in this wonderful hymn. On behalf of the entire Augsburg community, let me add this official welcome to Dr. Kurbanow in his newly invested role as the 11th president of Augsburg College. I would like to thank all of you for attending this very special event this afternoon. In just a moment, Bishop Hansen will offer a benediction, which will be followed by more inspiring music. Would you join me now in giving all of our college musicians and our faculty from the Department of Music 
a big round of applause for their wonderful contributions. When the recessional begins, please allow the members of the platform party to lead first. They will be followed by our distinguished guests, faculty, and staff, and then by the Pribonau family and friends. After everyone has recessed out of the building, we invite you to join us for refreshments on the Ernest Lawn on the other side of Murphy Park. Thank you again for joining us for this important day in the life of our college. Bishop Hansen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, your imagination is revealed in the beauty, the boundary, the intricacy and majesty and wondrous diversity of creation. We give you thanks. O oh, improvisational God, you leave us with a sense of awe that you have bent low to become one of us in Jesus the Christ. Through his death, resurrection, and life, we are one in you. We give you thanks. O oh, gathering God, it is your desire that we live in relationships in relationship to all the living creatures, in relationship as one humanity, in relationship to one in faith in the body of Christ, richly diverse. O oh, liberating God, you set us free in Christ to serve others, to give us an unquenchable curiosity that may move mountains. O oh, sustaining God, Grant Paul and Abigail, all who lead and teach and serve and study in this community of faith, a strong measure of your grace and your mercy. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let your light shine. May Christ Jesus open your hearts and stand beside you. Let your light shine. May the Holy Spirit guide you and live within you. Let your light shine, may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may all of the merciful, the compassionate, may the one God, the creator of us all, bless you and keep you now until the end of your days. Amen. This little light of mine this Shine. Let's shine. 